In this lesson, we'll begin working with effectors in Cinema 4D. Alright, so when it comes to working with MoGraph, uh, really cloners are the main uh, source through which we actually populate and build up our scenes. So if we were to come in and just simply drop in a clone for this sphere, and let's say maybe we switch this to a grid array, and we'll do maybe 600 by 600 by 600 centimeters. There we are. So that way we wind up with something like this. So again, you can see cloners are a very, very quick way of starting to populate and build up our scenes. Now, effectors are pretty much the main uh, source through which we actually start to modify and influence and start to add movement and behaviors to these clones. So if we were to come up to the MoGraph menu, uh, in Cinema 4D12, these are actually going to be found inside the effector menu. If you're using an earlier version of Cinema 4D, these effectors should be listed out here in the main MoGraph menu. But let's start with something like a random effector. So if we drop this in, you can see that here is our random effector. Now, if we actually wanted some kind of an effector to have an influence on the clone, what we need to do is go into the clone itself and go into the effectors tab. Now, if we already have a clone selected whenever we add an effector, it should automatically uh, connect it in. If it hasn't, that's no problem. We can manually connect this. So all we need to do is go into the proper cloner, go into the effectors, now take whatever effector we want, simply click and drag that into the list. Okay, so in this case, again, you uh, can see where we used a random effector. If you look very closely, you can see that it has actually come in and randomized these uh, different spheres and all these different clones. Now we can actually start to change this behavior if we go into the random effector itself. Just simply click on that. And let's start with something like the main effector. So in the effector tab, we have uh, really just the overall strength. So we can start to dial this up or down if we want the randomization to be a little bit stronger or softer. We also have the option to choose between a few different random methods. So random, again, just to chooses a completely randomized method here. We can start to adjust that seed. Maybe if we want to try to get something a little bit different. We also have uh, things like a Gaussian uh, randomization, which as we start to uh, use some of these methods, um, you'll see that a few of them have animation but a Gaussian just uses a slightly different method for randomizing. We also have uh, noise and turbulence. Now noise and turbulence actually do have animation capabilities. We can see that whenever we choose something like noise, we now have animation speed and scale. So if I used a noise and then come in and start to play through my timeline, we can actually see that these little guys actually do move. We can start to adjust the animation speed, so if we want these guys to move a little bit slower, or crank this up if we want these guys to move a little bit faster. We also have scale, so if we want uh, that noise pattern to be a little bit finer or a little bit softer and more spread out, we can easily come in and start to adjust that. The turbulence provides a uh, very similar functionality, but just a slightly different pattern that it uses to animate that. And then we have sorted, which we'll actually get into in one of the later lessons of this course. Uh, typically, you'll find that uh, noise and turbulence uh, if you want to add animation and things like that, these are two really, really nice options to use. So in my case, I'm going to switch this back to noise. Now, what I'd like is for these spheres to actually move in a little bit larger pattern. So right now, they're pretty much staying uh, closely clustered together. So if I wanted these guys to move uh, a little bit further, I can just go into the parameter of this randomization and now start to adjust the actual position. So right now it's really only trying to move these guys about 50 centimeters at any time. So if, let's say maybe I wanted these guys to move 300 centimeters. We can come in and start to adjust that here. Or if I wanted them to move maybe 600 centimeters, we can come in and do that as well. Okay, so uh, really, really nice uh, effects that we can start to get here. We can also start to add things like scale randomization, rotation randomization. Uh, so really lots and lots of control that we have here. Within the color mode, uh, this is where we can actually start to randomize color patterns and things like that. Again, we'll talk about this uh, in one of our later lessons of this course, so we'll come back to this. Uh, but for now, one of the things that you may want to keep in mind whenever working with uh, something like this random effector in particular, if we're trying to move uh, maybe entire clusters of objects, you might notice that uh, while we do have some individual patterns here, 
uh, as far as these little spherical movements, uh, they tend to pretty much stay closely clustered together. Uh, so they really are going to move uh, still sort of as one unit. Now, if we wanted these to all behave a little bit more individually and a little bit more naturally, what we could do is go into this random effector and set the noise to an indexed mode. Now with indexed, what this will actually do is try to treat more of these clones as individual objects. And so that way, instead of having these little bit more closely clustered together uh, little patterns, we can actually start to spread that out and actually treat each one of these clones with a little bit more individuality. Now, if at any point in time, if we've added some kind of an effector or something to one of our clones, and maybe we uh, don't want to have that anymore, or maybe it was accidentally added on here when we didn't really want it to, all we have to do is go into the clone itself that we want to remove this from. Again, go back to the Effectors tab. We can take whatever effector that we want, just simply right-click and remove. Or if we have multiple effectors listed in here, we can remove all. We'll actually talk about multiple effectors here in our next lesson. So for now, if we were to come in, right-click and remove, you can see that random effector is no longer affecting, but it is still listed in my Object Manager. So it's still listed up here, just not being used anywhere at the moment. Now, one of the nice things about some of these effectors is the fact that they are not necessarily always limited to just working with clones. So, for example, let's say maybe I wanted each one of these spheres to maybe have a little bit of movement and a little bit more randomization, actually sort of deforming in a little bit more uh, kind of membrane, kind of natural shape here. Well, what I could do is come into my effector, and I'll just go ahead and drop in another random effector. Now, if we wanted the random effector to maybe influence a, an object, let's say, instead of actually uh, parenting it or putting it in some kind of an effector tab, you'll notice that whereas the cloner has an effector tab where we can start to add effectors, individual objects and things like that don't. Well, we can still use these, though. So if I were to take this new random effector and actually make it a child of this sphere, all right, so now in this new random effector, I could come in and once again maybe just set this to a noise pattern, play this through, you'll notice that nothing happens, which is completely normal. So if we were to go into this random effectors parameter, or rather the deformer tab, we can actually come in and start to set some kind of a deformation. So maybe if I wanted this to deform an entire object, I could do that. Or maybe if I wanted it to deform the points on an object, we can come in and do that as well. So we can start to get uh, these really, really interesting uh, really neat effects with this, and we can combine something like this, maybe with the uh, first random effector for this cloner, so we can come in, and with these two put together, you can see where we can very, very quickly start to build up some uh, really, really neat, really interesting effects, but really this is only being done with two different effectors put in two different places in my object manager. So you may recall from one of our earlier lessons where we were actually talking about uh, cloning objects or cloning across an object surface where I actually had a plane that was deforming and sort of warping around. Well, this is the exact same setup that I used for that. Just plugged a random effector into that plane and then just made sure that that random effector uh, was set to deform points, uh, objects, or polygons. In my case, I, I believe I used points for that. And then just make sure that your noise is set to uh, noise or rather that your random is set to a noise. So that way we can actually see some kind of an animated uh, effect or an animated deformation. All right, so that's a look at how we can start to use uh, fairly basic effectors to start to uh, very, very heavily influence our clones as well as individual objects. So in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can start to use multiple effectors on our cloners.